Hi everyone, let's play a little game, Kanda, combination of snooker and bowling. The red balls are the infectives and the yellow, the susceptibles. These are the people who can get infected if they come into sufficient contact with any of the infectives. So this is a neighborhood situation under a local lockdown that has become the go-to strategy in many countries for controlling the coronavirus. Let's add the score line. So three infectives, seven susceptibles and zero recovered cases. Now imagine we have plenty of teddy bears who can swing the red balls. All of the red balls will have a go simultaneously. But let's see them one by one so that we can follow what's happening. The first one is a skilled one, so it pots two. The second one just keeps it straight. The third one swings it, pocketing two. Now let's see behind the table. So this is the behind the scenes magic that happens in the bowling alley. The susceptibles who got hit become infected and the previous infectives recover. So yellow changes to red and red to gray. We take the tray with us to the front. Place the infectives in the playing area and park the recovered on the side. They are out of play. Let's update the score. So we have 5 infectives. Susceptibles have declined to 2. And we have 3 recovered cases. This is the SIR model right? If you prefer SIS and which recovers don't get immunity so you place them with the susceptibles. SIS is easier. Or shall we say not any harder so we will just focus on SIR. Now assume this is the position and the T at round. We have 5 infectives and 5 susceptibles. Let's increase the number of susceptibles by 1 just to stress that the balls on the two sides don't have to be equal. And let's update the score line as well. Now you can start playing rounds keeping count of the score at each round. So you have chain up scores and this is pretty much the chain binomial model. The game stops when there are no infectives left or you run out of susceptibles. But if you are the brainy type then before playing you would like to know what the chain can look like and what the probabilities of the different possible chains are. How many people will be infected and when will the epidemic end? Answering these questions in the probabilistic sense is relatively easy. As long as the numbers are not ridiculously large and if they are then you should be using the version of the SIR we have discussed before. Let's replace the numbers by symbols. I for infectives, S for susceptibles and R for recovers. And the subscript T represents the round number so it goes from 0 to as large a number as you like. Now if you're the first susceptible guy you can get hit by the first infective, the second the third and so on. Assume the probability of contact sufficient for the transmission of the infection between any two individuals is P. So the probability that you get hit by any one of them is P. Don't forget you can get hit by multiple balls at the same time. But as is always the case in such combinatorial type situation, it is easier to focus on not being hit. The probability of which is just 1 minus P for each of them. And now if we assume independence, then the probability of not being hit by any of them, this not being hit by the first and not being hit by the second and so on and not being hit by the last, is just the product of the probabilities of not being hit by each of them. Here these individual probabilities are equal, so we just raise it to the power of the number of infectives. We have i underscore t infective, so that's why we raise 1 minus p to the power i underscore t. These settings in which the probability depends on the number of infectives is called read frost and there is a simpler version due to Greenwood in which Q doesn't depend on the number of infectives. As Greenwood model is easier, we will focus on read frost. Now back to you. Don't worry, you're not any different from the other susceptibles. They're also facing the same infectives and same chances. So the probability of not being infected is the same for all of them. Remember, they are S underscore T susceptibles, S underscore T being equal to 6 in this picture. So we have like S underscore T Bernoulli trials. And we know the sum of Bernoulli trials form binomial. And if we want to write the probability in terms of infectives, then we say the number of infectives in the next round 
conditional on the current situation will be binomially distributed. S underscore T is the total number available for infection and the probability of each of them being infected is equal to 1 minus Q because Q is the probability of not being infected, right? So now we can use the binomial probability mass function to calculate the probability of the number of infectives taking any generic value, say M. So calculating the probabilities of the numbers changing from one round to the next is easy, but we want to be able to calculate the probabilities of the whole chain knowing the initial position. Let's say we start with I underscore zero infectives and S underscore zero susceptibles. So the probability of the next round is easy. We just replace T by zero and T plus one by one in our formula. Now we can chain this to the next round. So to calculate the probability of the chain of the number of infectives starting with I underscore zero and taking values I underscore one and I underscore two in the first two rounds, we take the probability of I one given I zero and then multiplied by the probability of I two given I one. We have the first conditional probability already and the second one is the same really. We just replace T by one and T plus one by two. Now we can continue the chain this way. Let's write the generic version. So we go from I0 to I1, I1 to I2, I2 to I3, and so on to some I underscore T. So we just write the product of these conditional probabilities, which we can write compactly using the product symbol. And this is the probability of the chain. We shall see a simple example in a bit, we shall bring it home. Now in many cases we are interested in the complete chain as opposed to the partial chains we have written. It's not hard to change this to a complete chain. We know the chain ends when the number of infectives becomes zero. So it means this would be a complete chain if the number of infectives in the next round is zero, which has some probability, right? We just add one more term to the chain with the understanding that i underscore t plus one takes a value of zero. And by the way, we also made this replacement. S at K minus I at K plus one just represents the previous susceptibles reduced by the number of new ineffectives. So it is just the number of susceptibles we will have in the next round. And we can also replace Q by the expression in terms of the main parameter P. To see a simple example, let's say we have one infective and two susceptibles. So we can enumerate the values the chain can take. The first value in the chain of infectives is of course one because we are starting with one infective and two susceptibles. It might be we have a sensible guy or a terrible player who misses the whole lot and we run out of the infectives in the first round and hence the game stops. Or it might bot one and that guy turned out to be a sensible guy so it doesn't score and we run out of infectives in the subsequent round or oh, the guy scores but the next guy also hits one and now we don't have any susceptibles left so the game stops or oh, our first guy might infect two in one go and we are left with no susceptibles after the first round now you can calculate the probabilities of these chains so you get the whole distribution and you can answer any questions any president or prime minister might ask and if you don't like this approach then you can use the transition matrix as you can easily see we have a bivariate markup chain so you can easily calculate the transition matrix and then use the tools that come with markup chains to answer any questions anyone might ask now we assumed we know p but we don't. So how does one estimate P? If you are a data science person, then you can find an observed chain of infectives in another neighborhood and then just use the maximum likelihood to estimate P. So you just write this probability of chain as a function of P. Take log to convert it to log likelihood and then differentiate with respect to P. Set it equal to zero and solve for P to find the parameter. It's not much different than the basic maximum likelihood right that one uses as a replacement for linear regression in the most basic cases. And if you have data on many households and neighborhoods, 
then you can also answer questions about whether the assumptions made about Q, this whether it depends on the number of infectives or not, hold, this whether read frost approach is any better than Greenwood's. Please give a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in the next.